What happens if you're a firefighter and you arrive on a scene, the hydrant is empty. So firefighters at the Palisades fire in California encountered that situation. Because a reservoir had been drained empty, because so many firefighting apparatuses had hooked into the water system, and because of the destruction of so many homes leaking water, there was no water in which the firefighters had beyond what was in their trucks. Typical fire engines carry anywhere from 500 to 1,000 gallons of water. And at 8.3 pounds per gallon, that's a lot of water. But it's not always enough. Trailer attack line off a truck can spray as much as 125 gallons per minute. Larger two and a half inch hose can spray up to 250 gallons a minute. That's anywhere from two to four minutes worth of water, depending on how much your truck carries. Blitz nozzles that provide exposure protection can flow up to 500 gallons a minute. Even booster reels and forestry hoses can spray up to 13 to 60 gallons per minute. When your truck goes dry, you gotta look for an alternative source, and that's where the hydrants come in. But in California, they didn't have any water coming out of them. So when you can't hook into a hydrant and you need water, one of the sources you use is a tanker. Out west, they call it a tender. Isn't that a chicken? Isn't that chicken? No, it, it, it's this. 1,500 to 5,000 gallons of water carried in a tanker or a tender. In California, during the Palisades fire, tenders would pull up by the fire engines, hook right into the tanks to provide the water they needed to fight fire. Many tankers and tenders carry these drop tanks, put them on the ground, fill them up with water. They would be a stationary water source you can use and you can run your tankers and tenders to go refill. Drop tanks of several thousand gallons could be established, including large water bladders. The question becomes, where do you go to fill up the tanker? when it's empty. Normally you go to a hydrant to fill up, but with the dry hydrants in the Palisades, tankers would have to go long distances to go find water. Alternative lines, maybe miles from the fire. If only there was a source closer by that they could tap right into. So when you encounter a dry hydrant in a rural setting like ours, what we do is set up water points. We'll go to ponds, we'll go to creeks, we'll go to streams, and we will drain water from them. We will set up our trucks, we will use the hard suction off our trucks and pull that water. In Southern California, that's difficult to do. A lot of people want to talk about pulling water from swimming pools. You gotta get your fire truck within 20 feet of a swimming pool and most people can't do that. You can use smaller pumps, but that isn't always very efficient. So why not tap into that one source that's right there? the Pacific Ocean. At the very bottom of Topanga and Sunset where this fire was, there are parking lots where people go and venture into Southern California's beautiful surf. Why not drive home dry hydrants? Dry hydrant is nothing more than a pipe. It goes straight down and then turn 90 degrees parallel to the surface underground out into the ocean. Due to the pressure of the weight of water and the air pressure, pushes the water so it's sitting there at the bottom of the pipe. All a fire truck has to do is come up, hook into that dry hydrant, use its priming pump, pull a vacuum, suck the water up, and now you have an unlimited water source, the Pacific Ocean. Trucks, trailers with pumps mounted on them could be refilling tenders, tankers, in series, setting them up to Panga, sending them up Sunset, and providing the needed water for firefighting in the communities up in the hills of the Palisades. One of the concerns many people have is this, that salt will get into the fire truck and damage the pump, damage the machinery. However, good maintenance, preventive maintenance, back flushing with fresh water, annual service testing to ensure that the pumps are flowing at their required capacity would find any degradation in the pump over the course of the engine's life. Whether you can use seawater in fire suppression has already been answered as seaplanes are dumping 1,500 gallons of seawater on the fire at a time. And the real contamination that is being done would not be by seawater, but the chemicals and material leaching into the soil from homes and vehicles that burn up and contaminate the area. So why didn't they install dry hydrants along the Pacific coast? Well, fire departments have to prioritize their limited budgets. They have to plan for what they are more likely to encounter. 
This fire has been analogous to the 1961 Bel Air fire. And if you're encountering fires of this scale only once every 60, 70 years, then this is gonna be a low priority issue. However, if these fires are becoming more common, then you have to rethink your priority and your budgets. This all comes down to several issues. Number one, leadership. The leadership to make this a priority issue. Second, budget to get the money to go ahead and do this. You don't need to install 20 of these up and along the PCH. However, starting with one or two, especially at the bottom there of the key roads, Topanga and Sunset, would have provided a ready water source from which trucks could refuel and head back up the road. Third, you have to allocate resources for it and train on it. Resources and training are ever in demand with fire departments. Because of the needs to respond to medical calls and increased call volume, there is less time to do this. The situation faced by the firefighters in Southern California is massive. Hats off to them. Fighting wildfires in those winds and those conditions are hazardous to say the least. And when you're fighting a fire in 60 mile an hour winds, you don't fight that fire, you get out of its way. However, having water available, ready to use, even if it's salt water, is preferable than having no water at all. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is not a critique of the firefighting abilities of the crews out there right now fighting the fires in Southern California. My hat's off to the women and men who are out there facing the beast and fighting that fire. Wildland fire is some of the toughest fighting any firefighter will ever do. It's excruciating, it's climbing up and down hills, it's using nothing more than a shovel or an ax to try to get a line around a fire, being pushed by forces such as the Santa Ana winds. This video is merely intended to show some alternative sources that can be used for water that may not have been applicable at the time, but as fires become more prevalent in the area, definitely something that needs to be considered. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe and like to the channel. See you on the next episode.